Hello fellow fish nerds and happy Fry Friday to you. This Fry Friday is actually a video that has fry in it. Uh, both uh, very very early fry and a few week old fry. What you're currently seeing here is some um, uh, defensive behavior uh, of a female um, Epistogramma uh, cockatoides versus the male um, obviously. The male just came, I mean, the female, excuse me, just came out of the cave uh, to uh, defend her fry, which means if I can get a light on that so you can see, get as close as I can without startling her too much, and then get the light in there. I'll, you'll be, you should be able to see some eggs. Last time I saw the eggs were on the bottom, so there you see some eggs in the very bottom. Actually, they have gone from eggs and now they're just looking they're about ready to be in the wiggler stage so pretty exciting um, sh there are some more back in the cave but uh, I think she's yes yeah, see there's one on that wall in the back right there I'm gonna go into the light off for now but you do see the um, the eggs and I think one of them is a wiggler or they're starting to turn to wigglers right now uh, which is pretty exciting. Um, this is actually the second batch for this pair. Um, their, their last batch, which I'll show you later on in this video, um, is about three weeks old now. And a little background into this breeding session or this uh, spawning session, I guess it would be better to name it, is. Um, uh, I moved them downstairs into this, well, I brought this tank of theirs downstairs and put them back in it. Um, they were in a uh, separate uh, container for the sake of safety and stress on them to uh, uh, reduce stress and increase safety. Um, and uh, they've been in here. I ordered the cave that you're seeing right there that the female is in. I uh, ordered a three pack of those. I'll put a link down below this video uh, through Amazon. If you buy that or anything else through Amazon, you will help to support my channel um, or my classroom or the uh, Hooked on Fish um, program as well. Um, which doesn't cost you anything extra. I'm just going to throw that out there. But um, anyways, uh, Brought them down here, got them set up in the tank, got, got the fry uh, container from their first batch set up um, in here so that that way the water would stay the same temperature for the fry. Um, I put an air stone in it just like what you see here. Um, and uh, I, I'm able to do water changes and, you know, do a quick gravel vac. Not a gravel vac, but sucking out some of the detritus with, here's a straw that's attached to the end of a, uh, just a syringe with a airline uh, hose on it to make it uh, flexible that goes in just your average beverage straw and I thought I'm able to insert it down into the, let me get on, insert it down into the uh, container and then suck up the uh, specific uh, areas of waste that I want to clean out. Um, and then I um, replace it with more fresh water than what I took out. Uh, I usually take out two uh, syringe fulls and I um, replace it with three syringe fulls, which, which means I take out about 70 milliliters of old water and I uh, replace it with about, um, with about 125 milliliters of fresh water. So that way they are getting a a, a water change and these are one gallon so that's 3.78 liters so that's 378 milliliters so it's not even a 10 percent water change at all it's more like a um what 125 milliliters on a 378 what hold on 3.78 oh that's 3780 wow that's what you get for being an American uh, and not used to doing metrics very often. I know, I know a little bit better than most, being the fact I'm a science teacher, but yeah, that's 
about what a three percent water change or so but I figure if I get out the bad stuff and put back in clean stuff and you know it's a focused amount of bad stuff I'm taking out so anyways that lights really finicky let me just get a little tap tap a -roo. tap tap tappy there we go lights back on the female's not coming out very much but um anyways let me go ahead and pan over to the uh fry from their last batch. You'll see them in the bottom left hand corner especially. Um, it started off as 11, one immediately died that night because they got eaten by a glowfish I'm pretty sure and so I was down to 10 now I'm down to 5 and I think these 5 are gonna stay safe. Um, I know you can probably only see one, two, three of them, four of them moving around uh, there's one more up in the Java Moss up above. There you see the Aristone. I do have an oak leaf in there to release some tannins to give them some microorganisms to feed on and to soften the water as well. I already have soft water, so I'm not really too worried about that. Just a, also another hiding place. It's an area of shade in case they want to get out of the light, take a little nap, a little snoozer. And uh, they seem to be doing pretty well in feeding them on uh, microworms and crushed flake food. Um, and uh, you see this area of the tank that their container's in is a portion of the bare bottom. It wasn't on purpose, it's just how it ended up, but whatever, not really bothering me. But um, anyways, I do have the fry are currently in this container with the uh, airline tubing going in the top right there with some floating, get some, some duckweed and some uh, dwarf water lettuce is in this container. And then the other container, which has the female in her cave with some java moss and uh, a leaf and an air stone as well. And all of this is off of obviously one heater. And so I feel, feel like that's a pretty good way of uh, keeping the temperature regulated. Um, so the temperature is staying on the inside and out, so it's uh, reducing stress to the fry. Um, the female seems to be doing fine. She's, you know, with just a little bit of some um, uh, flashing and some uh, behavior. She's able to scare the male away um, and doesn't have to do very much. And he can't get in, in there even if she isn't paying attention. So uh, I think that's a really good thing. Um, I did just, uh, I did not ever take the cave or her out of the water. I um, completely submerged the opening to the uh, container. Uh, to let it fill up with water so that I could then just sl slide the cave into the uh, container <clears throat> and then uh, I'll give the f female a while with the uh, with the fry and then start feeding her some more live black worms to get some weight back on her and get her healthy again and and then probably feed the uh, the fry some micro worms probably put it down in the uh, Java moss, go some crushed flake food, and I think that that should work. So I mean, it's an experiment in progress, and see what's the best breeding method. And it's it's a learning learning process, but I'm having fun because honestly, the first time was a complete surprise. It completely caught me off guard to see these fry swimming around and how tiny they were. Um, and then I was sick all over that weekend, and I looked in. And I hadn't been feeding them or anything. I look in and I see fry. That was pretty exciting. And once again, this time, I it built up with. Um, I was feeding them some live, feeding the parents, the male, and the female, some live black worms, and and I uh, was feeding them about every other day, a few times a week, and you know, crushed flake food and flake food, and um, and. Uh, started noticing the male showing off a little bit and the female I didn't see her in her old cave which is made out of a PVC end cap didn't see her in there ever um, so I figured well I guess she might be in her, in her new cave and she was and the male I did never see the male go in there to fertilize the eggs but then I uh, fed them some black worms and the male ate them and I put them right next to the female's cave and she didn't come out I was like hmm it's kind of strange. So I checked behind the sponge filter there. I didn't see her, and it so was like she's got to be still in there. So I checked inside with the flashlight, and sure enough, there she was, guarding some eggs. Um, 
Let's see if we can get another quick shot of the eggs before we go here, but it's a pretty exciting process. But once again, that was, I noticed this right after a time of doing nothing. Oh, that's too, too much. But, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty cool to see that. Pretty exciting stuff. Um, she's not eating the eggs. She is, I have seen her move them. I have seen her take them from one place and put them in a different place. So I suspect that there's another area of the cave that has even more eggs that I've not been able to see yet. Um, I also have seen her, you know, fanning them to get some water movement. She's definitely a great parent. Um, and this time the only tank mates of these parents are some young panda guppies. So I'm not worried about them as much as I was with the glowfish. And even less so now because I do have her in this container. So the fry will, uh, be able to have a much higher, uh, survival rate. I'm pretty excited about that. So... Anyways, thanks for tuning in. I'm sorry it was, you know, a lot of a shot of, you know, an empty cave here or uh, just a female in there. And, but I do hope that you found this informative and the steps that I've taken and what I'm doing to increase the uh, survival rate and what I'm doing to uh, feed these fry and how that's going. Um, and just these really simple ways of, of raising them. This is my first time of really what I consider actually breeding a fish. Because uh, one of the fish I've bred pre previously to this is live bears. And live bears, I didn't really breed them. I just kept them alive and mixed the male and the female together and put them in a in a in a conditions where they would survive and let nature nature take its course. So this is. Definitely a new um, notch on my belt, I guess you would say, as far as fish keeping experience. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, and it's, I mean, I talk about it way too much, like in person with my wife tired of hearing about it. So it's nice to be able to have people on, on YouTube, all you people in the fish fam, to, uh, to talk about this and get excited for me. So I really do appreciate that. Um, on that note, I'll go ahead and end this video here, and I uh, just want to be sure to uh, re remind you to turn on uh, notifications, click that bell down below so you can see an update. Maybe I might post a video of when these fry do become free swimming and what the what the mom taking them. I think that one right there um, towards the middle of the screen is going to be a male. It's my best guess. It's my hypothesis. Um, Anyways, I hope to make a video of when the female starts taking the fry on a fry parade, as uh, Rachel O'Leary calls it. Um, so be sure to turn on the notifications for that. Um, I do hope to have some more update videos of these fry you're currently seeing right here and how they're doing, um, how they end up doing. So please be sure to turn on uh, uh, notifications. If you haven't already done so, uh, go ahead and uh, subscribe. Uh, comment below if any questions or comments you have. Uh, a lot of them do turn into future video content. Um, I will try to answer them to the best of my um, um, ability um, and my knowledge. Um, I don't know everything. I don't even know close to everything. Um, and the great thing is, um, I'll be honest, the exciting part is, I feel like I don't know enough. So that's what keeps you going and looking for more information out there. There's a nice shot of the mail. It might be a nice thumbnail too for this this video, but anyways, uh, yeah, like, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications, share this video on social media, share my channel on social media. I'd greatly appreciate that. Check out my links below to my um, channel T-shirt, uh, my Amazon affiliate links. It doesn't cost you anything extra to help to support my channel, um, and uh, and yeah, just thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for stopping by, and stay tuned, and stay classy, people. Wait, wait, hold on. Sorry, that was Anchorman. Stay tuned, and stay fishy, people.